Hi friends, it's Gospel here. I'm a medical doctor, a student coach, and also a YouTuber. Today I'll be talking to you about active recall, which is one of the very important reading strategies you must utilize while you're in medical school. So let's get right into it. The question is, what is active recall? It's a system of retrieving information from your memory without looking at the material in which you read it from or wherever you had the information at hand from basically. Now, active recall is very important because you have a lot of work to do. The syllabus is much. Everything you need to do essentially in that session might be quite so much to study. So you need an effective reading strategy so that when you actually read, you recall everything or almost everything you study. So for the medical student, just passive reading, watching videos on YouTube, reviewing MCQs may not be enough if you want to grasp the material in its entirety and be able to reproduce the information from your memory and also to understand everything in that particular course. So these are some of the reasons why active recall is important. Now it's important I differentiate active recall from recognition. Recognition simply means just identifying, okay, I've seen this somewhere. I feel like I know it. Now it's the trap that students fall into in most cases when they practice MCQs and you're looking, you're reading the question, you see the answer, you just have that feeling, oh, I've seen this somewhere. Yes, you're actually correct, but it's not the best. The proof that you understand something is that you're able to teach or explain it to someone without looking at the material from beginning to the end and not just stopping to recognize the information. That can be deceptive. It can give you the false sense of the fact that you know it. So now you've identified the answer. Yes, you know it. Then the question comes, why is that the answer? Why are the other options not the answers? Do you get? Active recall will make sure you're able to give the answer to those other two questions. So active recall, it's very important. Again, it simply means retrieving information from your memory without looking at whatever material or textbook or slide that you actually read the information from. So why is active recall, is, why is active recall important? I stated that already. One of the reasons is for the sake of your long-term memory. Now, even up till now, so not everything though, but some of the things I read in year two, which was like five, six years ago, I can still record them with ease. Part 1M professional exams, pharmacology, pathology, pediatrics, name them. If I see the information you know, at different sources right now, I can still piece them together and say, okay, this is this, this is this. And it's because of the system of reading I used in school, of which active recall was a part of them. Definitions, I can still remember some of them just like the snap of my fingers because of active recall. I did a lot of recalling on those things over and over again. So the memory circuits in the brain kept being formed and they became very, very strong. So active recall is very important for your long-term memory and also if you want to understand what you're studying very well. So there are ways you can do active recall. The first I'll be suggesting to you is to utilize flashcards. Now flashcards can be in analog form or in the digital form. Digital form, popular one, is Anki. I'll do a separate video on how to use Anki. I used it for a bit in medical school, but there was another one that I found which was free and that was also very, very effective as against using Anki. So there'll be a separate video on how to use flashcards. But the idea behind flashcards is this. So you have the front, which is where the question will be, and behind, the explanation or the answer to the question will be that. Now I said you should use digital flashcard because you can just write the question which will be short and copy the answers from your slide, your lecture notes or the textbook and paste it behind. As against having to write the question, write out the answers, that's going to take a lot of time which you don't have so much of it as a medical student. So the digital flashcards are highly recommended. So. Obviously, when you see the question, the idea is you try to say the answer from your memory. Until you're able to do that over and over again, then you can validate that you actually now have this information and you own it. Different from passive reading where you just read and then you're asked and it's like, I actually read that stuff, but I can't remember it. Active Recall helps you avoid that. The reason why you can remember your phone number, your social security number, whatever it is that you know you have at your fingertips is because you've 
brought it out from your memory over and over and over again. Same with your national anthem. You've brought it out from your memory over and over again, so it's there, it's almost become a part of you. It's the same psychology behind the active recall as a reading strategy. So utilization of flashcards can help you achieve that. Number two, practice tests. So taking practice tests. Now this can come in the form of multiple choice questions, but the catch here is after recognizing an answer, you try to explain why that answer is the correct answer and why the other options are not the correct answer. In that case, you're doing the active recall while taking practice tests as MCQs correctly. Other forms of practice tests would include short answer questions, the essay questions, EMQs. Obviously for the essay questions, it doesn't mean you have to write everything, but as you see the question, you can actually see the answer offhand. And when you've done that multiple times, you check the box and be like, okay, I've done much in terms of practice tests on this particular question. So practice test is something that will help you. Number three, the utilization of visual aids. So pictures, graphs, charts, Whatever the case is, you can create pictures and then you just close your eyes for a moment to see how much you can recall about that picture. The percentages, the values, everything on the picture basically, you close your eyes to see. If you can have the complete picture in your mind, by the time you do that over and over again, even when you're not with the material, once you close your eyes, you're going to be seeing everything. It's one of the tricks I've told persons, especially when you're studying anatomy. Sometimes it's not just about reading the textbook. On some days, just take the atlas, look at it, close your eyes, put all the labelings there without looking at the book, and you're going to be very surprised. Give yourself a few weeks, you're going to know anatomy so much. When you're talking, you're not just talking from the theoretical part. It's actually as though you're seeing a human body while you're standing to talk or to move stuff. That's how we call it We are based in Nigeria. So. You want to make sure that you're using visual aids to help you recall information better. Number four is the SQ3R method. Now the S stands for survey, the Q stands for question, the arrow stands for read, the next second arrow stands for retrieve, and the final arrow stands for review. So survey just talks about looking at the textbook or the body of writing, skimming through it, just to have an idea what it's about. And then after doing that, you set questions, maybe objectives on what you want to get out of that particular material. But let's leave it at questions. Just set questions, read through the questions. It does something to your mind. As you're reading, your mind is actively searching out for the answers to those questions, as against just mindlessly reading through the material that you have at hand. So set questions. And then after you set questions, go ahead, read the material, and then go back to your questions, retrieve the answers to all those questions from your memory, and then you review with a spaced repetition pattern of studying. So that's the SQ3 arrow method. It will help you with active recall. The famous technique talks about the fact that you don't truly really understand something until you've taught it to someone. Now, you must not be an actual human being because you would not always get someone to explain your information to. So you could have your pet, a cat, a dog, or just an imaginary person in your room. Put a shirt and a trouser on a chair and talk as though you're talking to a real person. Anywhere you identify gaps in knowledge, quickly go back, review the material. Now, you won't be able to do this for everything in a course, but if you identify difficult concepts, let's say in biochemistry, the pathways, that was it for me. Using the famous technique helped me a lot. The ability to teach it without looking at the textbook made the pathway stick in my head and I understood what the different enzymes or cofactors we are doing in the, every stage of the pathway. So the Feynman technique comes in handy when you are finding something very difficult to understand or to recall. Just go ahead. Immediately you find, get a grasp of it, teach it to someone immediately and that information is going to stick with you for a very long time. Number six, you write questions when you're taking notes. Now, this is a better way of taking notes, in my opinion, as against copying the textbook over and over again. Because you tell yourself the truth. Sometimes when you make notes from the textbook, you go back to read the textbook again. I know there are a few persons that actually just focus on their notes. And those people are sort of professional notes makers now. So they take notes during the lectures, they go back, read this textbook, augment the notes. Some of them intentionally create spaces by the side of the notes 
to fill in the gaps, read another textbook, piece everything together. So at the end of the day, what they call a note is not actually just a note. It's like a summary of many textbooks. That's a different case. As against just taking notes that are not very decent because you feel that the fact that you're writing this information would help you remember it better. Note taking has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. It can slow you down. You might just be rewriting the textbook. If you're writing it from your head, which is a different strategy that talks about like summarizing, that's a different case. But a better thing to do would be to instead make questions as you read the textbook. For every paragraph, for every new heading, make a list of questions that you want to answer in your notebook when you finish. So when you are reading the textbook again, before you read that chapter, look at the questions, try to answer the questions, and then say the answers offhand from your memory. Next is you stop and you summarize. So you finish reading a definition, you finish reading a list of items, you finish reading the body of the main theme of that particular topic. You just stop and summarize the information you just read. In your own words, it must not be as verbose, the quantity must not be the same, but the idea must be captured in its entirety. And any valid information that you think can show up in any stage of the exam, pay particular attention to those ones. So you stop, take a break after reading, and summarize everything again. The next two, do a pretest before you start your revision. Now, this is very important. You've not, this means you've not read a topic at all. Just go online, browse out multiple choice questions on that topic, and see if you can fathom anything from your memory. Now, doing this sets a tone for you again, for your mind to be watching out for those answers, and it exposes the levels of your ignorance. I know sometimes when I'm, you know, finding it difficult to be motivated to read a particular course, again, let me use biochemistry as an example. I just get a biochemistry multiple choice question book and I check number one, I don't know the answer. Number two, I don't know the answer. Number three, I don't know the answer. As against physiology, well, maybe number one to 30, I might fail only two or three. And this is biochemistry. So there is just this energy that comes up and be like, I have a lot of work to do for this particular course. So, Doing a pretest before your actual reading or revision has a lot of advantages for you. So sometimes just take a pretest before you actually read the body of the work, and that will make you good to go. The next is stop relying on Google as your first point of contact. When you think of a question in your head that you've read before, actually just contemplate a while and see if you can retrieve it from your memory before going on your phone. Google should just be kind of a verification system. Mind you, the answers online were placed by persons like you, so it will not always be correct. So see if you can get the answer correct in your mind first, then you go on Google to actually validate the information that your memory supplied you. So stop relying on Google. Number 10, spaced repetition based on how difficult the concept learned is. Now you've done active recall. It doesn't mean that the fact that you did it once or twice, the information will be with you forever. No. Based on how difficult it is, create a pattern of repetition. So if it's very difficult, you might do alternate days initially. If it's something you know very well, you increase the time in between the repetitions. It might be every seven days, at some point every 14 days, for the ones you're very good at, you might not just do them maybe once in a month, but basically create a spaced repetition pattern that you're going to continuously do that active recall on to sustain the information you now have at your fingertips. So these are the things you want to know about active recall. Active recall is work. It takes diligence. Instead of just reading through and feeling like you know everything, now having to take the patience to validate your knowledge, it takes work. But then, the work is definitely worth it, and I encourage you to practice the active recall strategy. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up, share with your colleagues who are medical students, share with your friends, and of course, do subscribe to this channel. Most importantly, the next video talks about space repetition. You want to learn how to do space repetition, the reasons why you should do it, and everything around that. So make sure you watch the next video. Thank you very much.